Hello and welcome to Flory Models Kit View Time. Today we've got Hobby Boss's brand new 148 scale. This is the MV22 Osprey. Now, if you're a bit like me, this kit came literally out of nowhere. And I'm really, really surprised it's here as quick as it is. You know, there was no big sort of fanfare or build up with this. And we've waited years and years and years to get this kit. It was sort of mentioned, not massively, uh, to be honest with you. And a few of us who are into our sort of helicopters and modern stuff like this got quite excited. And go, oh, it'd be really nice to have a neutral one. Because let's face it, the Atari one is like a prototype from decades ago so it's not exactly up to date so i thought really really excited about it and i thought well look we'll give it a couple of years and it'll turn up next thing you know i get a message from matt pm saying it's out and it's like out you know where did that come from it literally dropped out of nowhere so need to say i am not complaining it is at the moment as we are in the middle of the covid pandemic here we are the start of 2021 i am just amazed that this kit has made it here so quickly and with no problems or anything else so i'm not going to knock it i'm just going to enjoy it and see exactly what we've got so nice box art obviously we've got the osprey in flight in the marines uh, markings as you see down in here got an idea of the scale again a lot of people i think don't realize how big this thing is it is a very large lump indeed so you can see it's actually got a length of just over 37 centimeters and it will have a wingspan as well with around about 50 centimeters so technically it's going to be quite a big lump the great news is this thing does fold up so obviously being a marine or a naval aircraft it does fold up into quite a compact little stowage item so so running around on the box there's actually not much detail on the box but what we can see is that we do get fully detailed sort of cockpit interior area we've got good wheel wells and then we've got a full length interior cabin as well with details in there just like that so that's a little nice touch with it uh, over here you can see you've got your kit number for this one which is 81796 all right and then down on here you can see we do get a little bit of photo etch when we got the markings for it down in there like that and again there's not a great deal to see on that so without further ado let's jump in it's a good top opening very strong sturdy box so i'll give them that and as you can see straight off the bat it's like wow that's nice so we've got a very large fuselage section just down in there okay we've got looks like the interior it's got one of those systems where the interior plugs in so we've got that one down in there like that it's very nice indeed and then we've obviously got the various cockpit details interiors and sort of sponsors on the side we've got props for the rotors okay there's that top wing and as you can see we've got a hole in it so it looks like movable but we've got the vortex generators and everything else on this so that's really really nice okay more props so two piece and um, we've got the tail section and again we've got a little bit of photo etch we've got a uh, what's coming up sheet uh, and obviously we've got some bits there obviously all about the osprey which is fair enough we've got the decals we've got the standard we've done that uh, pull outs so we've got the instructions and then we've got a full cull out one as well which we'll look at just in a moment as always we'll start off looking through the instructions to see how this thing goes together okay so usual thing parts uh, got your sprue layouts and all the rest of it just down in there like that and then pretty standard as you can imagine so we're in with the seats so we've got some seats and we do get some photo etch uh, harnesses which are these guys in here we'll look at in the moment all right so we've got those down in there and then it's that usual thing of working through the actual cockpit so we've got obviously decals which are going to be making up your instrument panels and stuff like that right the way through then we've got the sort of interconnecting part with the front cabin to the rear so obviously it's got the entrance door we assume in here and things like that as well so that's those details down in there fire extinguishers again a little bit of photo etchings like that on there to hold those in so some nice details in there okay then front wheel well system and the front gear as well it's said about putting it in now technically i think you can probably put it in afterwards and then we've got the main gear and again it's saying about putting it in now but i'm sure you could put that in afterwards so that's not a problem so that's fine okay same on the other side and then these are like a slip fit which is an interesting way of doing it. it'd be interesting how that goes where they're literally just going to push straight in there like that okay then we're working on to the actual interior of the cabin and again this is probably the only area looking at it that probably will need a little bit more life into this one okay so we've got all the seats in the stow position up so we've got a deck on the floor but again i think you might just want a few little bits and pieces in here just to liven it up but generally i think that's quite good detail right the way through we've got the door or your ramp going in the back as well okay a couple of fire extinguishers things like that being fitted onto there and then obviously we've got some seats up and down it looks like you can only have them in the actual uh, uh, folded up position rather than down which I suppose gets around the problem of having to have harnesses on every single seat 
Okay, door shows it being closed up, but again, we are sure this is workable, so I'm thinking it'll be up and down right the way through. We've got the windows being fitted into this one. They're gonna be a push fit into this outer area, things like that, some smaller windows on those types of things going in. And then it's gonna be a case of shoeing, horning all of this in. So as you imagine, we've got the front flight deck area going into that midsection down into here, and then obviously those being fitted in and then the front wheel well as well. So all of those going in there. Again, this is gonna be the old dry fitting stage just to make sure everything's in there and you know, before you commit to glue and you might need to niggle some bits out. It'll be interesting to see how that one goes, all right? So that's all of those going down in there. We've got the FLIR sight being fitted onto the bottom as well, onto the nose down in there. And then we've got the glass work. So big old piece of glass at the top the overhead instrument panel being fitted into that one. Then we've got these sort of sponsons on the side being fitted into there just like that. Tail system goes through right the way through. And again, doesn't look like we've got posable rudders on the back but that's okay and then again lots of lumps and bumps so we've got all the aerials and antennas and things like that being fitted onto here gear doors radar warning receivers uh in-flight refueling probe in the stow position as well those being fitted in there just like that and then obviously we've got the uh, flight radar things like those and then we've got some strafes uh, which are going to go onto the forward edge like a lyric system uh, onto these and there's a few other deflector type ones on the back and all the lumps and bumps that make up that sort of detail communications uh, and gps sensors and things like that going on on the back there then it's over to these engines which look pretty straightforward right the way through so we've got the engines being fitted down into those ones putting those sort of nacelles all together then we got the blades and again it looks like they are workable i'm saying workable this would be one of those ones it'll probably work a few times and then end up snapping but i am wondering because of the design of this if you could actually just replace it with a metal pin or a brass pin to make it a workable pose. So it would be quite nice to be able to unfold this and fold it up. And because of its design, it's quite simplistic uh, of how it actually goes. So I'm wondering if you could do that. Uh, so if I get around to building this one soon, it's probably what I'm gonna end up doing. So it would be nice to show it open and folded up as well. So it would be a good one to show on there. But anyway, we've got those going in there literally like that. Same on the other side, and obviously you're going to be making up uh, your sort of six of those as it goes right the way around. And then obviously depending if you're having it folded or open and things like that in your design, okay? If you are having it folded, obviously putting these in, we've got the spinners on the front and the various parts onto those, as you might imagine, right the way through. Flaps being fitted, again, it looks like these are fixed in position. Uh, doesn't look like we have an option to have them deployed. It looks like they're just in up position. But again, it may be one of those ones with a little bit of liberation, shall we say. You could have it down. So if you wanted to do it sort of an in-flight pose or something else like that, you could drop those down in there. I can't see a reason why you couldn't. Okay. Then the case is obviously it's putting it all together. So we've got these, uh, both of these, which I think are plastic for the fences on the outer wings being fitted down into here then the engine the cells being fitted and then obviously popping these two halves together to make up that entire top section then it's going to be a case of putting it in it does look like it's a click i thought it looked like a bayonet to start with but actually looking at that it does seem as if it's like a push down and it's going to click so it is going to be a one time fits all situation with this again this is one of those where you might want to click those off so you could remove it you know, and then obviously it just makes it a little bit more safer perhaps for transportation and things like that if you are thinking about sort of carting it around the shows. But generally, actually I'm impressed. It was one of these things that for the price point, it's a lot of plastic. You can see here, we've got a giant pile of plastic down in here, but it's one of those ones where it, it's quite expensive. So you're expecting great things. And then Hobby Boss have a habit of sort of simplifying kit, shall we say? Not in a bad way, but sometimes the detail can just not be there. I think that's a good compromise. I do quite like that. So over in here, we do get a full pull-out sheet in gray or gray. So usual thing, you've got your sort of gunship and your light and dark ghost grays onto that one, which is pretty much a standard uh, Marine Corps color. But obviously there is different operators around the world with some in more interesting schemes. But I think with the weathering done right, they do weather really nicely, these. It'll actually look pretty good indeed, okay? So that's quite nice. And obviously you've got all your decal placements on there like that one. Speaking of decals, let's dive right in here. So if we can just grab a close up, there we go. And then again, we were talking about this. It's really nice how Hobby Boss and Trumpeter actually tape this in because so often they fly off. Anyway, looking around at this, you can see that all looks pretty good. Color looks good. Registration all looks very good. And to be honest, down in here where we've actually got the 
uh, the instruments uh, and the, the screens, things like that, they're all pretty good, no problem at all. They're all in the powered down, so if you wanted to do it powered up, you might want to change the faces on these a little bit just to make it good, but I think pretty much it's okay. Let's be honest, you're not going to see much in there. It's very glassy, but the glass is facing the wrong way. You're going to be looking into the cockpit, not down forward into the instrument area, and there's no massive big windows on the top that you're going to see through because you're going to have a tint on them and things like that, so not really worried about that. Photo etch parts, as you can see, so literally we've just got a couple of grills up here at the top, and then obviously we've got some little details down in here and a couple of harnesses for the pilot and the co-pilot down in there. Okay, so that's no problem at all with those. Right, so let's get into the good stuff. So, now in bag one. So slicing and dicing my way through. So we've got the clear parts, we'll look at those last, okay. So as you can see down in here, it is a large sprue. There's lots of stuff going down in here. And let's face it, it's a modern aircraft, so it's gonna be more composite, I think, than most things. And as you can see, that's pretty nice. And then down in here, there's not much really to see. It's a good Hasegawa S plastic. It's very hard. It's not that standard Hobby Boss soft injection molding. So actually, that's quite nice. Also as well, if you're looking down here on the fences, uh, around the sprues, they're square. Is a bit weird but there we go perhaps there's some new design thing coming on so on the close-up hopefully you can see actually very nice we know it's more composite materials and stuff like that so we're not expecting rows and rows of riveting it's not a ch53 but where it has got them like these areas down the back they are all here so if you've ever seen the real thing up close and i've been privileged enough to have been to a couple of air shows where they've been on display they seem to be very rivety around the back but not a lot around the front and I think this sort of shows it. Underneath as well, again, there's not much going on, but where it is, it's absolutely fine. And then over the sea, on here on the top, this will be a bit of a nightmare seam line to deal with. That's basically running along the top, but I think it'll be okay. This is that click and fit situation on the top. I don't know. It'd be one of those where it might be worth just smoothing the underside so you could get it off if you wanted to or just remove it totally. But down here on the other side as well, you can see the on the other one no problems at all with that okay so that's pretty good and to give you an idea as you say on the length of this thing just like this it's 37 centimeters on your fuselage with this okay the doors and the ramps down here at the back as you can see pretty good nice level of detail on those so we're quite happy with that okay so we work our way somewhat in order as it came out the bags so <clears throat> okay so down in here as you can see okay on the next one so this is really your interior details to this one all right so really we're looking in here uh, and a great thing with this is I can't see any ejector pins on the inside or anything else like that so that's all pretty good the way this is done again it's got that real it doesn't feel like Hobby Boss, it feels like Hasegawa plastic. It's really weird on that one. Okay, so moving in a little bit closer, as you can see, we've got great detail with the riveting and everything down in here on the back of these actual, the flap systems. The nacelles, as you can see, there's loads of riveting, lots and lots of detail on these. So that's very nice. That's not gonna be a problem then, putting a wash over this one. It should take it very, very nicely right the way through. On the interior, as you can see, it's got everything you'd want. And again, this is one of those ones where you could go to town with it. You could literally say, right, let's get in there and add some more wiring, a little bit more hydraulic -y stuff going through, perhaps some uh, sound suppression gear and things like that in there. So yeah, I think, you know, it's it's a good jump off point, you know, without over complicating it and making it a massive build. I think it's got everything you, you could probably want in there. So top wing section. Okay. As you can see, you've got everything you sort of need on this. It's got all the details, it's got some beautiful riveting detail, panel line detail, it all looks really, really good. These, again, this is one of those things, technically from a scale point of view, doing vortex generators like these have got on here, this is to make the air sort of, you know, cartwheel about and all the rest of it, giving more control. But again, you can tell how modern it is because these are really sharp and they're very, very thin. They're about as thin as you could possibly get and get it out of a mold, I would say. So uh, very good to see the details on these ones. But if you get in there on the close, you can probably see how nicely they are done. So that's pretty good. And then the underside, 
down in here you've got all the details you could want okay again a little bit of thing with these i thought you might get uh, a little bit more distance shall we say down in the intake system but they're not they're sort of just finished off now would you see much in there i don't know especially if you've got a blade uh, especially if you've got a big old blade in front of it but uh, i think it's one of those ones where it'll be absolutely fine but generally no problem at all big old ejector pins on the inside look huge but it worked because we've got no punch out marks but really nice it's got these raised details on it as well and the recess which are going to take washes very very nicely indeed okay so moving to a little bit more of the smaller intricate parts as you can see another huge sprue the big old sprues these are just about fit in my camera okay as you can see with everything down on there so if we just uh, zip up to the close-up okay you've got all the gear and the various bits and pieces up here we've got that cockpit which actually doesn't look too bad at all uh, all the bits on the lumps and bumps circuit breakers things like that down in there we've got this well system that is going down between the cockpit and the cargo and obviously the entrance door things like that as well that looks pretty good okay then working our way down to some of the other things these nacelles on the side are fully detailed and again you can hopefully see on the tops we've got some nice details and you've got details on the bottom as well so actually that's very nicely done down in there so we've got both of those going through and then on the other side we've got some of these little formers for the main wheel wells the overhead panel and again modern this is obviously a modern aircraft they don't have a thousand switches like they used to back in the 60s you know it's all computers now so there isn't much in the way of stuff going on these are these wing fences that we were saying about on there and they are very very thin that's really nicely done as well so that's good some detail we've got the seats things like that down in there and generally it all looks very very good indeed it's funny because the ejector pins they're very fine they're, they're there and they're a little bit recessed which is fine but they're big and they do work we've got no ejector pins on any parts so we've got none inside the doors we've got none inside of anything which again is just showing that next level can't see ejector pins on any parts which are going to show which is really really nice we do have the odd little sink mark don't get me wrong we've got one just down in here on the top of the uh, instrument panel combing there's a little tiny sink mark in there but actually I think this could be a really nice step up by Hobby Boss on this one so yes good stuff okay so let's go next to the tails and then we've got the blades and things okay so you can see down in here again the level of detail the riveting the various bits and pieces on this one all looks pretty darn good some really nice details on here very very finely done you know i you know i'm gonna say it i actually think this is probably the finest detail i've seen on a hobby boss kit the the riveting is incredibly fine the panel lines are incredibly fine so actually i think this could be a, a new step up with them hopefully you can see them in the light there they're all there but they are boy are they fine you can't feel them at all okay it's all sort of recessed in there there is a little bit of texture it's not like these are polished hasagawa molds but that's fine because it'll take paint nicely good stuff right so two bags to go okay so this is a match pair so we need to look at one okay so down in here on sprue d as you can see we've actually got the the props and there's a lot of difficult curves and lumps and bumps on these but it looks like they've nailed it i've got tiny tiny mark if you can catch it down in there which i assume is ejector pin but i don't think it comes through i certainly can't feel it i just can see it where it's so close uh these are obviously the things for the, the actual props which you're gonna spin over and all the rest of it but that all looks very very nicely done the spinner on the front the details no problem at all the wheels obviously they're not the best fan of just having two halves together but actually they work it's got a nice sort of deformation between the two nice bit of a job around the brakes got the pitot tubes things down in here all very nice and sharp and detailed tiny tiny little bits like these things down at the end here absolutely minute okay and again all the details look very very nice indeed it will be interesting to see how these do sort of line up in these but we're hopeful that it's good and say so it'd be hopeful that they could move if we can get them to be movable it'll be proper happy days but again no sink marks there's no flash on any parts that i can see either and we some of them like these down in here are quite complicated but they're very nice clean 
properly molded, no problem. Okay, last sprue is more of the props or rotors. Is it a prop or a rotor on this? Difficult to know. Okay, so again, we've got some of those workings and the various details in here. And again, I don't think a pin in there is going to be too much of a problem. Quite a straightforward fix on these. Got enough plastic to play with, that's for certain. So it'd be interesting to see if we could make it workable. Because again, these little pins in here are just going to snap. A couple of turns on that, a little bit of pressure, they're going to give way. But I'm thinking uh, with a little bit of uh, uh, maybe even one mil, maybe a little bit smaller, 0.75 mil brass, something else like that in there, you could actually pin these to make them workable quite straightforward. And again, no flash, I can't see any deviation, all the holes look good and clean. Really very, very good. Okay, last up we've got the clear parts. Okay, Hobby Boss's lovely way that they always wrap them up to protect them. And again, we're looking for clarity and deformation. As you can probably see, that is clear. No problem. There's a little bit of wobble into it, but you are talking about a very complex curved shape. There's a little bit of an edge to it as well, so masking will be okay. You know, you've got something to actually butt up against when you're going around with a knife, which is good. So that's all fine. And all the other smaller clear windows, no problem at all. Though you could probably PVA glue those and get away with it. So the clear parts are absolutely crystal. There you have it. Do you know what? I've waited for one of these to come along for a long time. And I've often thought about building the 48 scale Italeri. But obviously it's very, very old. Um, I was lucky enough last year to build the 72nd scale Hasegawa one. And that's a beautiful little kit. It goes together really, really well and really was a fun one. But it's quite compact. It would be really nice to do a 48th one. And now we've got one. And I have to say, I am not disappointed. It looks like it's one of those kits that you could do so many things with it. Let's face it, you could go in there and fully detail it. You could do a nice in-flight pose with it. You could actually put motors into it if you wanted to, lights, whatever you want to. It's got enough room in that to be able to do it and to hold its own electronics and things like that. Personally, I think I would just try and pin the actual uh, props off of this one or the rotors to literally make them more workable. So if you wanted to display it, one of the nice things with this kit, you could have it all folded up for transportation or at home something else like that but if you did have your friends around or you were taking it to a show you could open it all up and show it in all its glory it would be quite a straightforward fix i think to do that one but i think relying on what the kit parts are to do that is just an accident it's just going to snap very very quickly so i think getting in there and doing it early would be no problem at all but there we go that is the hobby boss's brand new tool 148 scale mv22 osprey Thank you